We weren't nominated for the Grammys at the time. Second album, Bird, is we lost the Grammys. That's when it was like, no, y'all got it f***ed up. We went back and wanted to make an album that was undeniable. And we all know that I was Kemal's death. Today I will show you how Travis Scott created this undeniable masterpiece, from start to release, as well as how him and Mike Dean executive produced this whole album to make it a theme park experience. And this all started right here. Five months before Astroworld came out, Travis posted a Snapchat story. That story had my melody playing it. I didn't know it was gonna be the the intro. I didn't know it was gonna be the, you know, the music for the trailer. Rolling, 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 got me Anything. So I was like, holy crap. I made it on, on this right here. Just this little tiny thing. It was three tracks. I made the the synth and the whistle, the flute, all in silence. And J37 on the master, and that was it. I was too too lazy to figure out f other chords, so I just duplicated them and I pitched them up uh, 12 semitones. So it sounded like this. What I did was I, sh I moved it over like a little bit, so it sounded like. Yo. <laughs> On top of that, I added, you know, the, the infamous flute sound that everyone knows, which is. Together, they sound. The night that the album dropped, I was in the studio with a bunch of other producers who produced a couple songs on, on Astroworld as well. I never heard the second half of the song until that that day everyone thought that the speakers blew up because it stopped so suddenly <laughs> and everyone looked at each other and they're like yo and then boom but travis and mike dean's vision for asteroid was to make it extremely recognizable when you're playing a song this is Astroworld. To achieve this feeling, Mike Dean played this phenomenal transition. That transition part, it was uh, Mike Dean. I think Alan Ritter actually did some work on that, but it was definitely Mike Dean doing, you know, that the synthesizer yeah. stuff and, you know, the effects <laughs> with the, it sounds like the roller coaster going and everything. But if you want to make your album an undeniable masterpiece, you of course need the perfect single to promote it. He released it on SoundCloud with two other songs, so it was three songs. Drop the top, play hide and see. Jump inside, jump straight to the lead. Let it bang. Pop it, Can you describe how uh, Travis Scott Butterfly came about? Found this kid Felix. Mm -hmm. He sent me a pack of melodies. The Butterfly Effect melody was the loop. Wow. So like he sent me the loop and then I was listening to it. I did the drums to it. I like chopped it up. I like edited it a little bit and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a crazy beat. Like, it's pretty much like a loop, you know? Like, it's a loop. The intro is just mm -hmm. a loop running. And then sent it over to Travis. I remember FaceTiming Travis, and then we, we he was on FaceTime recording it and stuff. I'm like, this is about to be crazy. Oh, 
All of the business moves are now going into Travis's favor. He built the whole Astroworld thing up four years ago. Everyone is waiting. And now there's this amazing single, which got people even more excited. Two days went by and like Butterfly Effect had like 10 million views in two days. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy, just blew up. Two weeks left until Astroworld's release, Travis Scott only had a handful of songs finished. So what are you gonna do if you want to finish an amazing masterpiece? Where would you go? We were thinking about different places to go and we decided a lot of great albums were finished in Hawaii. And there's one song in particular, which most likely Mike Dean tracked a couple of days before, according to this picture. And this song could have been such a generic, repetitive, standard trap R&B kind of beat. But Travis and Mike Dean went again in from the top and made sure that the whole thing felt like something that must be on Astroworld. And even though they made massive progress in Hawaii, they finished all of those songs. With less than 48 hours left, Travis said this. Yes, sir. Be on my way to Mike Dean's right now. Why are you going to Mike Dean's right now? Is that I'm not done? And within those last 48 hours, Travis flew in people like John Mayer and possibly even Frank Dukes, who helped turn Astro Thunder from this version into that one. See, like the life I feel. Seems like the life I feel is a little distant, yeah Seems like the life I need yeah. Seems like the life I need is a little distant, yeah Like the remedy, yeah Sit back while I ride the D, do it on repeat, repeat But while Travis, John and probably so many more talented musicians are writing and producing new songs Mike Dean has to mix and master the whole album <laughs> And not just a standard mix, again, Mike Dean and Travis wanted to create a feeling with Astroworld. So for that, even the mixing was new. They experimented a lot with clipping. And it didn't distort. I mean, a couple of places it did, but it's cool. 2 a.m. before the release, they now got this Drake verse. Ooh. Ooh, checks over strikes. Ooh. 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 Which they now somehow have to work into sicko mode which originally was multiple songs. But to find out how the idea of merging these songs together came around, we have to analyze the first beat, which started off with this loop from Roger Chayahat. When the idea for Sicko Mode happened, it really was something that none of us were expecting. I was working with, uh, with Hit Boy, the one thing that remains common about all the chords is that this D is always the top note. So that gives it like a lot more tension in the harmony. Basically, that's how I ended up coming up with it. And Hip Boy ended up chopping the second half of my loop and making it the first one. So. But the part which probably gave Travis the idea of Oh, Mike, let's transition this. What's this amazing snare built up right here? Which, if you play it side by side, just fits perfectly with a bouncing drop from OZ. But what's even better is Mike's execution within the last 48 hour while mixing, mastering, Travis Scott was recording new ideas, everybody was producing new stuff. He came up with transitions which had all of this going on. Which they finished just in time, perfectly fit to. Travis Scott finally blessed us with a long way to highly anticipated album. 
As you see, to create a masterpiece, it takes so many different things. Long time, collaboration, also the art of being spontaneous. If you want to find out Kanye vs Pharrell, who's the better producer, you can check out this video. And if you want to learn more about the Astroid production, I have extended videos of the breakdowns on my Patreon right here. Thanks for watching. Well, that's a little done.